So what are the differences? Well, the big difference, of course, is that in independent education you pay fees. And that makes a lot of other things possible. It makes a great deal of choice possible because in the state system your choice is constrained largely by where you live or by what religion you are. In the independent sector, there is no such constraint. Nobody cares where you live. And so you will have a much broader choice of independent schools than you ever will of state education. Again, because you pay fees, independent schools tend to be very parent-friendly. You are paying for them. You can ask them to do things for you. You can ask them to bend the rules for you. Within reason, pretty well every independent school will view that positively. They understand that you are the customers and they are the providers. So if you need a variation for your particular child, ask for it and you can expect within limits to get it. And then there's the huge extracurricular breadth of British independent schools. Breadth and depth. In some schools like Patrick's you will be going to immense depth in in academic subjects. Opportunities to study and, and understand academic, the academic world in a way you just, you can't get in state because the resources are not there to manage it. But the core of what matters, of course, is, is where can I find the school that suits my child, uh, that is, is offering what my child needs. You, 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 both, you both run very particular schools. Why do you champion that particular kind of education? What, what benefits do you see from what you particularly have to offer? What I think really is the purpose of an independent education, of any education, a proper education, the education itself that is not a commodity actually and isn't something you can just buy but something that is sort of greater than both the teacher and the pupil and that's what I call knowledge, truth, understanding, thought, learning to be a really good person, a kind person who will participate and feel a sense of social responsibility and the ability to serve society. If you're an independent school, your gift is to go back to that first principle, think, what is it actually for? It is not for a percentage of A star to C IGCSEs or whatever it is. We're not target driven, we are principles and values driven. And at Seven Oaks, our particular education um, or offer, if you like, our particular conviction, our vision that comes from the principles I've touched on, it um, has been manifested by us adopting the IB. It's actually 10 years this year that we've been an all IB school, um, although we've been doing the IB for nearly 40 years. And we adopted this program because it embodies a search for some of the things I've just talked about. And uh, an education driven by inquiry, by um, open-ended thinking, by an international outlook, by um, the desire to um, go beyond any sort of capped level of knowledge and learning that exams naturally offer. So we've, I'm very happy to take questions about the IB later, but that, that's balanced, broad, connected programme, which means you always have an English teacher for your full secondary education, you always have a maths teacher, you have at least one science teacher, at least one languages teacher, at least one humanities teacher, and you're participating in an academic programme that isn't just an education programme that isn't just academic, that is embedded what is now called the co-curriculum. In IB language, it's called CAS, Creativity, Action, Service. You're embedding something that's, um, again, a, a not straightforwardly assessed course, theory of knowledge, about thinking, about learning how to make ethical judgments, about challenging the pr um, preconceptions with which you might approach any issue or question. Katie, thank you. Um, personally, for me, it's a huge, huge sadness that not all schools in the country can offer what um, independent schools can. And I have a very close involvement with the maintained sector through Harris Westminster Sixth Form. And I think it's appalling that 
so many children in this country are disadvantaged by poor investment in education, um, that all of us as citizens want all our children to have the very best possible education and opportunities. And for me, it's a real sadness. And a lot of the charity work that I do takes me into a lot of primary uh, and secondary schools up and down the country. And operating under the constraints that they are operating, they do remarkable jobs. Uh, I wouldn't disagree with anything that Katie said in terms um, of the virtues of independence. Um, and actually, just to stir things up, I fundamentally disapprove of the IB. Um, and um, so, uh, Katie's probably never ever heard me say this before. But um, I, I know he has in secret, and I'm ready to fight back. But, uh, I'm, I was the person who was responsible for starting the Cambridge pre-U qualification um, because many years ago when there was huge disenchantment with A-levels and schools were drifting towards the IB. And I'm half Dutch and half Irish, so I've, all my family have come through a baccalaureate style education um, and are hugely pro it. And I, I think that the philosophy behind the IB is wonderful, but it's not for everyone. And so we had this, the most exciting creative moment of my life. I got together six people and we just sat down with a blank sheet of paper and said, if we were creating a curriculum from scratch, would we create A-levels? The answer is no. Um, and so we went back and, and we brainstormed what we felt should be a curriculum. Uh, linear exams, which of course have now come into existence for everyone again, or returned, everything comes full circle with the, the reform of A-levels. But it was a really exciting opportunity um, to do that. And the thing about the pre-U, of course, is it offers um, the depth that Rafe was talking about. But of course, the great schools, um, of which the one that I'm lucky enough to run would be considered one, doesn't just do A-levels or pre-U. It's that extension work beyond that is so important. And because I don't want to go on for too long, we can pick up on those things in a moment. Um, I'll hand back to Rafe. Well, thank you both very much. Is, is there something particularly you value about in, independence? I'm going to start with Patrick for this one. Since I... Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, Katie really answered that brilliantly. And um, I mean, I think the fact that we have the, the freedom to choose curriculum, the freedom to select staff, the freedom to choose the qualifications we want to do, all those sorts of things, and, and ethos and values. And yes, of course, we are um, uh, accountable to governors uh, and to parents, and of course, results are important, but we have that, that whole holistic view of education, which for us is such a critical thing. Um, so that, that, for me, is what I love. I'm not constrained by Ofsted. Um, I'm not constrained by a target-driven bureaucracy. Um, and we have the freedom to innovate, and it's that freedom to innovate that means that we can be so creative. I think I just pick up on one thing Patrick said there about freedom to appoint staff because I think that is a big discriminator between the independent sector and the national system. Um, we could appoint, we can and do appoint anyone that we believe can contribute to our school in a good way. And uh, that means people who've got really massive and enthusiastic subject knowledge. And my, my, test, my, my sort of little thought as I'm interviewing staff is, if you were stuck on a bus with this person coming back from a very long cricket match in a traffic jam, would someone like this nice young person sitting in the front row get really bored talking to them? Or would they actually have a really fun journey and enjoy the traffic? And if you've got the capacity to appoint teachers who aren't trained, um, if just... You, because they've got natural talent and ability and you can train them yourselves in your environment to appoint people who've come from other walks of life later in life um, because they've got something to bring from the so-called real world. These are massive opportunities. And again, it's much harder to do that, in a, sadly, in, a, in the public sector. So I think the freedom to appoint and deploy your staff imaginatively and, and creatively is a really important um, strand that can differentiate between our schools. Thank you. And one, one last question before we open things up. How, how do you balance the, the need to get good exam results and to focus on what it takes to get good exam results with, with being broader? I mean, I think the days are gone when Winchester played exam chicken, uh, which was when they, when they were taking their maths GCSEs, they would all sit there doing nothing to see who would be the first person to break and start writing. And that was about, with about 13 minutes left, is generally when the Winchester kids would start writing the answers to their math GCSEs. But no, it's, that's, a, that's a very, very academic school. I imagine 
Westminster could, could have given them a run for their money on that. But I don't think those days are there anymore. Everyone, the, everyone takes, the parents take the exam results so seriously, you know they're going to be looked at uh, by the universities you want to get your children into. How can you drag yourself away from that pressure of assessment? By encouraging teachers to take risks, by not teaching to the test, uh, by not treating it as a, stra a straight jacket, um, and by having teachers who just naturally go beyond the syllabus and excite and enthuse the young people. So, for example, in our pre-U English, the teachers honestly go in to the first lesson with a new year 12 and they decide what books they're going to do what the interests are i mean that is so stimulating as a teacher but so phenomenally stimulating um, as a pupil as well and then they will just go off um, uh, down tangents and paths that they want to over the course of the first term where they're just being introduced to the delights of english um, and just be opening their minds and their and eyes to that and that's a real privilege um, so in a sense what we're offering is more a university style um, education, but it's fantastic. So I teach an A-level history set, which is very unusual for a head. Um, and, and just to give you an example, in a double lesson yesterday, one of the pupils was giving a talk, and it's one of those, those finest moments of one's teaching career for 17 and a half minutes, because I timed it. I didn't have to speak, that the entire set of 14 just responded to each other in, in, in a mature, reflective way. And that's what great teaching's about. So, you know, there are too many, and you're just a guide on the side, and just very occasionally, like Salisbury did, um, the 19th century prime minister, occasionally putting out a boat hook to fend off disaster. You just occasionally have to nudge them back on. But if you can get that sort of level of discourse, that sort of level of confidence, that sort of level of intellectual ta challenge and stimulation, uh, it's wonderful. So then you can afford to take the risks and not worry about results. And this is a bit boring, because I agree with everything that Patrick said. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, though, our two schools are extremely different in history in curriculum and character everything that Patrick has said, including the fact that I also teach an IB high-level English class, is true at Seven Oaks too. I mean, I think the fact is these two schools are schools where intellectual challenge is just in the ether of conversation, never mind the lessons. And, you know, I, I, I think we would both consider the results a byproduct of the kind of discourse interaction engagement with the world of knowledge, learning, discovery, and the young thinking minds of the students in our care and of our staff, that, that that's why the results are really good. We don't think about the results very much. They come as a byproduct of something much more interesting. And I do really want to reiterate here, it's not just about the lessons. Um, it's the whole the, the conversation that you have across a campus of an, in a quite a university style way at lunch at sport in the intervals of concerts and plays these are the things that give a genuinely sort of you know intelligent thinking environment for for the students who come to our schools and i think that's why the results are good it's nothing to do with thinking about them well thank you very much both of you uh, if you have any trouble deciding between these two wonderful schools come and see me on the good schools guide back left <laughs> and we'll we'll enlighten you